Hello and welcome to this afternoon's tour, the Patrick Geddes Land Trail. My name is Russell Clegg and I'm the learning officer for the Patrick Geddes Centre based here at Riddles Court. And today I'm going to take you on a journey of Patrick Geddes' projects around Edinburgh's Old Town. In 1890, Patrick Geddes established an undergraduate university hall at Riddles Court. It was part of a larger project to bring students back into the Old Town. And you can see some of the legacies of that here on the elevation of the building. So we've got a replica of the University Hall plaque here above the archway and the original inscription, which we think Patrick Geddes himself may have carved into the penned arch here. It says vivendo discimus and it means by living we learn. Patrick Geddes is widely known for his work as a town planner and the improvements that he made to Edinburgh's old town in the 19th century included the opening out of the external courtyard here at Riddles Court to let in more light and air into what would have been a slum enclave. Now, when Patrick Geddes removed this floor tenement from this space here, he had to find a way to maintain access to these upper floors. And that's why we have this very picturesque bracketed stair attached to the north elevation of the building here. One of the things that the Scottish Historic Buildings Trust did as part of its restoration was to install the sandstone roundels onto the flagstones here that lead into Riddles Court. And these roundels allude to Patrick Geddes' training as a biologist and a botanist. Geddes loved the natural world and described himself as a gardener. And this is why we have these lovely roundels with their botanical motifs in them, enticing you into Riddles Court. So now we're going to leave the confines of the courtyard here at Riddles Court and venture out into the old town to our next stop on the Geddes Land Trail. We've now arrived at the second stop on our Geddes Land Trail and we're standing outside the Camera Obscura, which is a visitor attraction here just by the castle. But in 1892, it was a building that Patrick Geddes purchased for his Outlook Tower project. Geddes wanted a museum of civics, a place where people could come and learn about their city. And when Geddes himself was in the building, he used to tour people right to the top a breathless ascent and when they came out on the balcony there they could see all over the city to the south the Pentland Hills and to the north the Firth of Forth so they got this panoramic view of Edinburgh this was part of Geddes's civic survey he wanted people to understand the city that they lived in and the environment that it was a part of in its time, the Outlook Tower was described as the world's first sociological laboratory. And it was a place where people could learn about the city's evolution through a series of exhibitions, maps, globes and other artefacts. It really represented Geddes's pinnacle of thinking that place, work and folk are all linked together. It was a call to action in Geddes's field of action. What can you do for your town? At the same time as Geddes was developing his project at the Outlook Tower, he was also developing a project here at Ramsey Garden. What he wanted to create here was an academic enclave for the teachers and professors of the university to live in. But as you can see, it's a wonderful piece of architecture built in the arts and crafts style with lots of different kind of architectural features, Scots baronial features, great turrets, great lintels and pediments here. Ramsey Garden was also the scene of the great summer meetings. And it was during these great summer meetings of the 1890s that the Geddes family themselves lived in the property. You can see here the stair tower at 14 Ramsey Garden with these plaques which link this building to Geddes's other projects around the old town, including Riddles Court and the Outlook Tower. What Geddes did was he put together these great interdisciplinary feasts of learning. 
He also created the Old Edinburgh School of Art, where great artists such as the Celtic revival artist John Duncan taught lessons. Geddes really believed that art was for everybody. And one of the things that he did was he embellished his projects with artistic motifs. And you can see one of them behind me here, these great fearsome Celtic dragons. Geddes was one of the spearheads of the Celtic revival movement in the late 19th century. And as you can see, um, he's adorned his building with plaques, with carvings, these cherubs of industry here behind me. We're now standing on Mound Place and outside the building that actually became the first of Geddes' undergraduate university halls. This was known as Lister Hall after the famous doctor surgeon. And Geddes bought part of the building and installed seven students here during 1887. The thing about these undergraduate halls that Geddes initiated in the old town is that they were completely self-governing. The students had to decide on the administration for the day, the housekeeping, and the bills. And of course, the students had this wonderful outlook looking over the city to the Scott Monument, the Firth of Forth, and the Kingdom of Fife beyond. And here we are in Wardrop's Court. Unbelievably, it's completely empty. And this area of the old town represents another one of Patrick Geddes' opening out projects. He used this conservative surgery approach to retain buildings of importance like Lady Stair's house here, but to clear away the slum tenement accommodation that would have crisscrossed this area. And he's created one of the largest courtyards in the old town. In the same way that Patrick Geddes saved Riddle's Court for future generations, he was able to persuade the Earl of Rosebery to take on this building here, Lady Stairs House, a 17th century building. Rosebery restored it and then gifted it back to the city and it became a museum. It's still a museum today, the Writer's Museum. Also, these houses here with the balconies, this was another part of Geddes putting back housing after he'd taken it out. You can see how picturesque they are. Spaces for plants and flowers and window boxes, which was all part of Geddes' scheme to improve the local area. And here we are at the final stop on our Geddes Land Trail today, Six James's Court. And this is really where it all began for Patrick Geddes, because in 1886, he moved here from a very nice apartment on Princes Street to this slum enclave in the old town. And he was lately married to his wife, Anna Morton. So it must have been quite a move coming from the new town to the old town. The reason that Geddes moved here was because he wanted to show by example what you could do to improve the space around you. And so clad in an old nightshirt, he would come out and paint the walls different colors, lime wash the interior stair walls to make them more hygienic and plant window boxes around to show the neighbors that just by putting a few flowers around the place, you can really, really augment your environment. His wife, Anna, used to hold embroidery classes on Saturday mornings for the local women of the close and courtyard to learn how to sew. What we've seen today in the places that we've visited around the old town is that Patrick Geddes was a real agent of change. He got practically involved in making improvements and shaping the built landscape of the old town by bringing students in, by creating cultural enclaves where people could learn, and by opening up the slum courtyards and closes to make them better places to live. Thank you very much for joining me today on this little insight into Patrick Geddes and his world. And I hope it's inspired you to visit the old town of Edinburgh and find out a little bit more about him and seek these places out for yourself. 
Maybe you could even come and drop in at Riddle's Court to find out more about Patrick Geddes and the influence and impact that he had on 19th century Edinburgh. <laughs>